Welcome to the Conscious Radio Network's YouTube channel. Become enlightened, have fun, and tell all your friends and family to share with everyone they know. You can find us on Facebook and stay up to date on our Facebook group or find us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Our podcasts can be found on Libsyn, iHeart, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. Most of all, remember to go to our official website at ConsciousRadioNetwork.com for podcasts, hosts, future shows, and scheduling. We also want to welcome our international audience. Don't stop now. Enjoy the community. Subscribe today. This is the Conscious Radio Network. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be on this spaceship we call Earth. Welcome to Conscious Radio Network's weekly series, The Seance. I'm your host, Reverend Dr. Paul Mackis. If this is your first time, please click subscribe, like, share, comment, or follow us wherever you listen to your podcasts. Quantum Soul Therapy. Today, a specialist in complex soul-based prognosis. She is a finder of soul obstructions in all incarnations at the quantum level. She locates the root cause of seemingly invisible and inexplicable mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual issues using her bespoke application of apometrics. She is a provider of diagnostic relief of, from all forms of soul obstructions. She not only clears these obstructions, but also heals the mental and emotional repercussions of these obstructions. Let's welcome to the seance today, Katish Aberfield. That was a big audience. <laughs> uh, welcome today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. You are very, very, very welcome. So, quantum soul therapy. Mm. I tell you, this is, this is a very intriguing modality and modalities that, that you work with. Mm. And this is a strange universe. Past, present, future. There's so many complex things in our lives from past lives to so much stuff that's in our way. And what, what, what got you into this field? Personal experience. Isn't it the same for everybody? It's oh, yeah. like the small, the small child with the breathing difficulty that became a lung specialist when they grew up, or, you know, the, the child that has asthma that became a, a professional swimmer and they, when they grew up. It's about what you experience in your lifetime that you try to figure out. And when you feel like you figured out at least one tiny component of it, you're like, I have to help somebody else. Yeah. 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 It, it's these are adversities in our lives that we um, get face to face with that. It's like, whoa, I need to do something about this. Not only help mm -hmm. myself, but then when we, when we overcome that and we help ourselves and realize what, what that blockage is, then we realize, wow, I think I, I, I can help many other people that might be going through this. Exactly. So what is soul obstructions? Okay, so it's basically a view of you instead of just as your individual incarnation, so me as Katish or you as Paul, it looks at you and recognizes that you're a soul, okay? And we have been on Earth and in many other incarnations. Now, traditionally, we are taught to look at ourselves just as this incarnation. And we are taught through all sorts of philosophy that the best thing to do is to live in the present moment and be in the now. Not worry about that, which is perfect unless you have things that are impacting you in the now that are not explainable by the now. Yeah. And that is why I hope to offer hope to people who say yes i understand what every single teacher has ever said but that's not helping me because that's what i went through myself is saying yes i understand you yes i know i have to do that yes i've tried doing that yes i've done that yes i've done that yes i've done that but it's still not producing results either i am stupid crazy or insane or there's something else that i need to understand that is impacting my experience here and yeah. if i listen to the mainstream which is perfectly good 
for the majority of people, but there are some people here that are facing extreme blocks that are meant to teach them lessons that help them balance out their soul's journey over all incarnations on this planet and others, depending upon where you are. Yeah. What are some examples of these obstructions? Yeah, okay. So a very basic example, which would stem from my time as a past life regression therapist, would be a limiting belief. A limiting belief can come from another lifetime. It means that it is still unhealed and impacting you. Once it's healed, it no longer impacts you. You don't need to access that past life or even remember that past life to move forward. So the fact that it still exists means that you need to to heal it. Another example would be a haunting. So do you have ghosts or negative entities in your house waking you up at night? Are you experiencing panic attacks in the middle of the night? Are you being frozen in your bed? You know, they are obstructions in terms of it is something that is existing in the dimension that a majority of the humans can't see because they choose not to see or it's not the right lifetime to see. But we know that there's more than just what is in front of our eyes and we know that people can be really affected by energy which has not moved back into the light or energy which has been delivered on purpose to help you understand the shadow parts of your soul that still need healing and so that's another example of an obstruction now taking or relieving these these obstructions is this in a sense a form of exorcism so exorcism in my understanding which is at a very basic level looks at demonology and a religious perspective based on you in this lifetime and it basically works on the principle that the demon is possessing you because of something that is wrong with you uh, some sin you've committed or something like that i see that as just one tiny perspective of of what can be affecting you and only one form of entity so there are lots and lots of different types of human non-human and psychological constructs that can be impacting you and causing obstructions they can be due to your behavior in this lifetime or in other lifetimes and even depending upon where you are in your journey other locations on earth yeah my job is to help you firstly cope by removing these entities and passing them onto the light or if it's a psychological construct reintegrating it and healing that behavior that emotion but then understanding where that came from and why so that when you're in a space where these entities or obstructions aren't impacting you you can say what is my responsibility in this situation why did i vibrationally attract this it may not have been me but am i able to stretch my mind a bit to understand that my soul on earth has had 144 incarnations and that each one of those has karmic implications for me whether i remember them or not and i need to check back to see what is active in this world still because all incarnations occur at once there's no such thing as time as you know so there's 144 versions of me running around doing their own thing and any one of those can be impacting me right now and you need to come to peace with to be a great person of light anywhere you need to have also had great incarnations of various shades of gray and darkness it's how we learn Yeah. yeah Even creation came out of darkness, no matter what way you subscribe. So to be the light, you have to experience the dark. And so it's a, a, the ultimate act of responsibility. 
is understanding if you can get past the victimhood to understand the responsibility. And then once you get past that, the next level of teaching, whether you're open to it or not, is understanding the duality versus non-duality and moving your consciousness into a non-dual state when we live in a dual earth. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it really depends upon what level are you at and being empathetic with, well, let's just look at what is impacting you at the moment. Let's help you just get rid of and clear all of that. And then what are you ready to learn about? What stage are you at? What can I help you with on your journey? And maybe I can only help you with a certain amount this time. And there's another practitioner or therapist who's going to be much more in tune with where you're at now that can be a better service provider for you. I'm, I'm not pretending that I'm a be all and do all. And I do refer clients on to other people. I say, look, I'm a bit brash and rash for you right now. I really think that you need to go and do some self-love work with this practitioner now. I think you need some Reiki now. When you're ready to come back for the next level, five years, 10 years, or next lifetime, you'll find me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get into a, a not, it's not really off topic, but it is a quantum, it's a quantum question because I'm, I'm definitely a student of quantum theory, quantum mechanics, and I love it. It's crazy. It's a mind bender. But the question is, do we not, the past, present, and future, time being nonlinear, is still coexisting, that we are still experiencing the past, present, and future all the time? Mm -hmm. And because even though we're in the now, you know, and past lifetimes, if, you know, we lived in the past, the past lifetime stuff, and I've, I've, you know talk to some you know quantum quantum scientists and stuff like that and they're like well it's it is non-linear but the past past is not necessarily the past the past is is still there the past is mm. still accessible so it still mm. exists and it's still happening yes at the same time the future has already happened and it's continuing to happen yes so And I think the easiest way that I have got my head around it is that you will feel most intensely in this current moment what is happening to you in other lifetimes at the exact same age that you are now. Mm. So if something comes up for you, generally speaking, it's because that other, I call them avatar, is experiencing that right now. And it will be critical for you where they match up and especially if you're traveling and you happen to go right into the location where you're other you're incarnated and then it's like whoa yeah you know what i mean that's happened a lot to me so um, yeah you're crossing paths yeah so and if it's not something that you need to deal with in this lifetime it's not going to affect you uh, unless you divide off the path suddenly yeah that you agree to and you you open a door and then you accidentally end up doing something that you didn't agree to do contractually. And then, then it's like, well, honey, you straight off the path. So now you got to deal with where you've gone. We weren't ready for you to do that till next lifetime, but you're in there. So do you want to keep playing in there or are you coming back here? Yeah. And that's where the mind can be so fascinated and want to know everything at once. And constantly I am being told and reminded do you want to know the answer to that question? Because it has implications and you will change timelines. Yeah. And I've learned, I've always said, yes, I want to know. And now I'm learning. Mm, no, mm. I don't want to open that door. That's okay. I've got enough to do already. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I've, I've felt that. I have felt that many times. And uh, as far as past lifetime, I have, you know, and not only probably because of the work that I do, and you know as a medium and and working with the akashic records and working with other people other practitioners and deep meditations that there's points of my life that i have experienced and looked back and saw portions of my past lives and then now associating it with what i'm doing now i'm going oh that's why i'm acting the way i am or that is why I'm feeling the way I am now for the last year, two years or something like that. Because 
these are not normal. It's not something that I was like, where did that come from? Where did that energy come from? So. Yeah. And if you can understand that, I find that is very reassuring and helpful because it helps you understand yourself and it helps you understand why you are the way you are and to decide consciously, do you want to be that way this time? Yeah. And you will then therefore understand the act of co-creation that you are doing with everyone everywhere because you will understand, okay, I have the choice here. Do I need to heal something? Is it fine? Is it just something that, that doesn't need healing? It's just a belief that I can let go. Is this person here to teach me something? Do I know them before? Like, for example, you probably have this ability as well as I do Never before, other than in the past two years, have I been able to, generally speaking, if it's needed to, meet somebody and get an impression, a vision within a week of exactly who they were in a lifetime where I've interacted with them before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can be both good and bad. Good if you okay with working through the consequences of it but bad if you feel say an attraction to somebody because you know you've known them or been in a relationship with them in the past life you have to be able to then put it aside and say well, who are they presenting to be me in the present life let's put that feeling away yeah I've, and i've let's... met people like that very few there's very few people in my lifetime now that i've met and still okay. know that when i when i think about it i'm going I've known them in a past life. There's something about their energy. There's something about them that feels very old, ancient. And, and, I, and I think a lot of people associate with this, but they don't recognize it. Mm. Mm. And specifically, I think that you have these experiences when there's something that you need to leave behind from this quantum entanglement with this person. So they will only come up for you to meet in this lifetime if there's unfinished business that is holding you both back. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's what I found. Otherwise you won't see them again. True. Yeah. 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 If, if there's something that you don't do, like you're, you're holding back on something, but, and, and then sometimes you'll get the feeling I, I got to do something, but what is it? But you just, or you're afraid to do it and then they disappear. <laughs> it's like, yep. try next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, another question I have too is at, that we're talking about in, within this field. Do you see that there might also be a collective implication to this, not only as an individual, but when it comes to when we look at historic events in world history? you know, wars and, and battles and world events and when they happen and how they happen, history repeats itself. Do you see that there's, it, this also works at a collective level? Yes. I think there's, there's layers on everything, just like collective thought influences your mind stream. Mm -hmm. So do collective actions. And the question is for you to discern do I have a responsibility with this thing that's going on on earth or am I here for something else? Because we can get really distracted by what's going on in all different parts of the earth. Our job is to stay focused on what we're here to do. You have to remember, and I think that you can be peaceful in the midst of any storm if you understand that people incarnated not just once, in any time, but you, your soul can choose if it's required to be incarnated three times, four times, five times in one distinct time zone, right? Mm. And so you may have other people who are here with you from your soul group that have also chosen to incarnate multiple times because it has become urgent for your group to do as a collective what it is that they need to do. So that's why you've all agreed to send in multiples of you because it's like this needs to get done and it needs to get done now. And we're sending you in four times because if this person fails and they go off the sidetrack, we've got backup of you three times. You already agreed to do this. And I think that that is where people don't understand that it 
all of these experiences, different locations, different people around the world, they are people at different stages of their 144 incarnations doing different things. So they may need to be in a war zone and they may need to be an ugly beast in our minds in that war yeah. zone to fulfill a shadow contract to help somebody in the 36th incarnation receive the light from the dark. So yes, I believe that you come to do things multiply in a lifetime if necessary and multiply on the same location in different different time zones. Like you might keep coming back to, let's go London, for example. You may incarnate 17 times yeah. in London because you have a responsibility for the energy, the collective energy in that location. And there's something that you need to deal with. So let's make it up. You have a particular soul responsibility to the Royals. Let's just pick that one out, right? And so you may incarnate within that fa family line or be somebody who works with that family for many, many times because you're, you have this specific thing that your soul needs to do with that group of people in that location. Mm -hmm. So until you finish with that, you won't stop incarnating there. So, yeah, I think I actually, <laughs> my my log logical and rational mind can only cope with it if I spreadsheet it. Mm -hmm. So I get a spreadsheet and I have the incarnations mapped out yeah. so I can understand things. Huh. Otherwise, I can't. I can't make sense of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's not normal. That's not normal. You're not meant to do that because you're not meant to remember them all. But if you're doing a job like me and you're trying to find obstructions in people, you have to do that. You have to map out the 144 incarnations because you've got to be methodical about: Have I checked this one? Have I checked this time zone? Have I done this? Have we looked at that implication? Which one is holding which one back? It, it is a a map and. Yeah, not many people are going to necessarily need my services, but there are people who will find me because, well, if you go to the Akashic, I've had sessions when I was doing the past life regression and people hear it on my podcast where they're like, oh, they've just showed me the contract where I was going to find you. I'm like, See? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So how did you move into – well, from from regression therapy and spirit releasement therapy into the uh, the apometric based mm. frustration, frustration. Because what happened was that when you do regression therapy, you're dealing with a human in front of you who can only cope with so much. Okay, they can, it's very energetically intensive for them to get themselves into the state that they need to be and then for them to be able to see, hear, feel or know the experiences from other lifetimes. When you throw in spirit releasement therapy, which is when we're dealing with attached or not or trapped spirits and dark force entities as well as emotional and psychological behaviour, you can only do so much in a session. A human being can last about two hours and then they needed a period of time for rest and then they need to integrate it, okay? So it's really quite a big experience for that human being. And so what I found is that the people that were coming to me were coming to me and doing some sessions and they would be like, oh, that's done, I never need to do that again. And then I would observe them in their life and I could see that they hadn't integrated it yet because they weren't ready. There was something else that needed to factor in. Or they weren't doing what I expected them to do. And I, I got frustrated. And it was when at a point when a client found me and she said, I saw I watched one of your videos on YouTube and your voice is what called me. I knew that I had to go see you. Now she had been to see church based, she'd had deliverance, she'd been to see African spirit releasement, spirit release kind of people. She'd done everything religiously and and She'd spent a long time trying to do things. So I was like, okay, what can I do that they haven't already done? Yeah. And I tried to take her into regression and her fear and she she blocked herself so much from fear because these entities were attacking her. I mean like full-on like exorcist attacking. Wow. 
Wow. Night and day. And she was blocked, totally blocked. And I could not get her to see or hear or acknowledge what was around her because there was so much around her. And I was like, there has to be something else that I can do. This is, this is not working. I'm not getting what I need to, to get done. And so if in doubt, I always go back to Tom Kenyon, who's a sound healer and he's, he works with the Hathas and the Arcturians. And I just basically let myself go on his website and I'm like, okay, what do I need to learn? That's a little bit out there today. That's going to help me in the field of work that I do. And as soon as I opened up to the work of the Hathas, they, they work in non, in non, non duality from the heart space. And they teach about the biophotonic energy in the body. So the biophotonic energy is the energy that you transmit from your DNA and from your cells. Some people may call this the, the white light that's in the body. They may call it the Christ consciousness or the, the, the Christ spark in the body. But this energy is actually usable energy that you can then use in releasing and transforming energy in another human being. So I went and studied, and when I say studied with Tom, Tom basically sells his 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 former in person sessions, the the group sessions, and you do you listen. It's sound healing. He he trained in psychoacoustics. He was a psychotherapist and a sound healer. And so you listen intensively and then you learn and you listen and you learn and it changes your energy field. And so I learned that I could harness the power of my biophotonic energy at the same time as use appometrics and specifically pendulums to actually be able to psychically capture beings and psychological constructs and then bring in the 12th dimensional light beings to then return them to the universal mind. Hmm. So I set my intention. I use, so I did multiple things at, at once. I did lots of study with Jose. Um, it was a Brazilian who had a hospital where he worked with psychiatric patri- patients yeah. and tried to understand why they weren't getting better. He worked with mediums so they would deal with what was attached to a client and that that me- that entity would bring themselves into a medium and then they would communicate through the medium and then they would do the healing and release that entity back to back to the universal mind but because i have that mediumistic ability what i trained myself to do was using this amazing guy called nick salzman who has interpreted the works of jose and then taken the work of uh, just a complete blank. <laughs> another uh, Eric Hunter, Eric Hunter, to teach people about pendulums. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then basically, instead of using a medium, you use very special pendulums to diagnose, and then do the psychic work using the power of your spirit, your biophotonic energy. But you have to have all of the angels and the 12th dimensional light beings in alignment so that you are basically psychically capturing and healing and then you're sending them to them to deal with the consequences, whatever it is, karmically, yeah. send them into the right location. But what I learned from that is that then you can actually, depending upon who you are and what you're meant to do in this lifetime, move past the pendulum and just use the power of thought with your biophotonic energy. So I use the pendulum for the diagnostics, but now I use the power of thought and intention to psychically capture. So for example, if a ghost came into your room right now, previously, in the beginning of my journey, I would have to say a prayer or use a sound healing to, or the, you know, Psalm 93 to, to bring in the angels to take that entity. Mm -hmm. Then my evolution moved to using a pendulum Now I just intend it and I can psychically capture and return to the beings. How do I know that that actually happens? I was gifted by a beautiful, I was gifted a beautiful rescue cat who can see all beings in all dimensions. Oh, wow. And so the first time I realized that there were, that there were, clients with ghosts or there would be ghosts coming to 
get help was him looking at the energy. And then I can see from his reaction what kind of entity it is. And over the years, I've trained myself to get physical body reactions now. So, for example, if it's a um, negative entity, I go really, really hot. Also, if there's a lot of ghosts that are coming for healing and crossing over, I get really, really hot. Yeah. If it is a being from a different dimension, my ears buzz and I get kind of dizzy because it's a different frequency. Your body is a different frequency. And if it's an entity from a different dimension that is wanting to attack me, like they're really angry with me, I like almost pass out from the energy Mm. difference. It's the negative intention entity. The cat goes psycho. (laughs) I can feel the heat and then it's like, oh, right. We have somebody who's very angry with me here and then I've got to go, which incarnation are they angry with? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a very long answer to a very long question. But, yes, that's kind of how it is. It's it's letting the power of your energy and using yourself as an energy field rather than just a physical human. Yeah. So share with uh, share with our, uh, our audience how people can find you and uh, reach out to you. Yeah. So my name is Katish, and if you just type that in, you'll get to katish.com, and that has the links to my social media and my podcast. And they can find all your social media links on uh, on your website and Katish for those for those who are watching they can read the thing on the bottom but for those who are going to be listening on the podcast it's it's uh, spelled k a t i s c h e dot yeah cool yeah th- this is we've touched on a few things that definitely click and things that I've experienced and yeah it's it's intriguing stuff it, it it's I've been looking at some of this stuff for for years and a lot of the stuff too is now starting to come together, starting to piece together. And what you've said so far is kind of like confirmation. It's like, yes, I know. <laughs> it's like, cool, somebody uh, somebody agrees. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah, right. And now, especially, you know, with all these attachments, it seems like, it seems like today, it's like we're we we all have some we all have an attachment not just one we've got all have many attachments now for those for those people out there what type of attachments or what type of issues normally would would somebody be having of that would need to reach out to you um, mm. okay the the most common is an attached human being so somebody who has died and not gone to the light in whatever belief system that you have, it's energy that did not cross over, okay? And this can be a pet cat. It can be your auntie, your grandmother, and that is the most common. Current life stuff is the most common. And why do we have that? Because we are afraid of death. So the majority of the human population is afraid that either when they die, they have been a bad person and they won't get admitted into whatever religious construct they believe in, or they believe that something about their life was not fair, so they want the chance to live again, Mm. or they trying to protect. So what happens is when we die and leave the body, we are now suddenly aware of all the energetic stuff around our loved ones, right? And you might go up, up, and then look down and go, holy smokes, <laughs> my son has 14 evil entities around him and I gotta go, I can't go up there, I've got to go and protect them. Yeah. And the problem with that is that they are more helpful to you up there than they are down here because down here they can't actually do anything. They drain energy from your vital your vitality Mm -hmm. and anything the most afraid ghosts will attach to a human being because it's the like energy, right? They want to, they want to look after their child. So they'll attach to their child to protect them at the time of death, whatever is energetically in resonance in their body now resonates with their child. Mm -hmm. So if they died of lung cancer, suddenly their child is resonating and vibrating at the same resolution of lung cancer. Wow all the mental constructs because they can influence your mind 
and I have recorded sessions of all of this on the on my own podcast for proof. Basically, they can influence your thoughts about yourself and about what to do. So, I, for example, one of my clients, she had three generations of grandmothers attached to her. And they were all impacting her life, her choices, what she thought of herself, oh. everything. And it was a huge relief to let them go to the life because they were trying to live their lives through her. So that's the most common. So when we when we don't grieve our loved ones properly, when we don't let them go, so if you know somebody who has extended grief, so they're still grieving somebody 10 years on, 20 years on, 30 years on, they haven't moved on with their life, that is a sure sign that they have an attached loved one. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, with some of these attachments, especially especially the thoughts that we have, when you mentioned that, you know, some of these thoughts aren't our thoughts. No. These internal dialogues that we go, what, why am I thinking that? Why? Why? I mean, that's, that's nothing that, that's something that I wouldn't normally think of. Hmm. But does that seem to happen quite often? Yes, yes. So your thoughts, that thoughts are energy, as we all know. So we are influenced by the energy that floats past from your neighborhood, your city, your country, and the collective thoughts, right? Then there is your own thoughts of this incarnation, and then the thoughts of any attachments you have, be they ghosts from this lifetime or other lifetimes. Because if you've got an attachment, it comes with you, it attaches pretty much at the soul level and goes to all lifetimes, right? So you don't, you don't rid them. And then negative entities. So negative entities, depending upon who you are and what you've experienced in the past, they will attach to you and be malefic in trying to make you feel depressed, anxious, and in some cases suicidal. So we have an epidemic of mental health issues because we have this ginormous amount of ghosts on this earth and because we basically expose ourselves to substances that lower our vibration so our aura is supposed to be like a force field around us but if we're not healthy our immune system drops and our aura is our immune system okay so when your immune system drops, the shield comes down and then then stuff that is not yours can come in, okay? Once it's in, it's hard to get off unless you either vi- increase your vibration, which is great, but it's very hard to do if you've got a lot of things attached to you. And secondly, anybody, and this is, let me preface, preface this by telling you that I went to university Many times, one of the times was to learn about wine, growing, marketing. I worked in the wine industry, so I drank a lot of wine, right? (laughs) When you have mind-altering substances like alcohol, sorry for those who believe in this, but ayahuasca or any of those psychotropic drugs, and if you are on any medication that influences your consciousness, and even in meditation, if you don't know how to protect yourself properly, all of those are gateways into an unprotected, unaware, or damaged aura. Okay, yeah. so cigarette smoke, tobacco smoke, I don't care whether it's ceremonial tobacco, any kind of smoking shreds your aura. There goes your protective system. When you're in, when you're drunk, I don't drink anymore, but when you're drunk, I have recorded sessions on the podcast where I'm speaking to a ghost, a human who's no longer incarnated, where they said, yeah, I met her at a bar and she was totally off her nut and so therefore I decided I would just jump on for the ride. Wow. (laughs) Bars are huge. Bars and nightclubs are just. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I can feel Um, feel that. It's, oh, man. Yeah, so you have to be you have to be careful with it comes back to if you are trying to escape your reality because you're living a life that makes you sad, happy, burdened, unhappy, burdened, guilty, afraid, right? Then you will choose to have experiences with substances that are societally acceptable or not acceptable that will take you out of your reality for a moment. Mm-hmm. 
the best thing to do is to build a life where you don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the hardest thing to do, right? It is. It is. Baby steps. Definitely baby, baby steps. steps. One step at a time, one day at a time. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, I gave up. I gave up a lot of stuff over the over the years. And it, within the last two years, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke. You know, it's just, I do this. I podcast. Why? Because I love doing yeah, me it. Me too. That's probably why yeah. I don't do that stuff anymore, because I love doing something else. I replaced it with a good habit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so to, to wrap up the show, what do you have as a good takeaway for our audience today? Yeah. If you're going through what feels like hell, know that you are not alone and that there are people like myself and others who believe in that which is not commonly talked about and there will be a reason for what you are experiencing. Find somebody who believes in you and allow them to help you and then build your life one thought, one moment at a time so that you recognize when something or someone or some energy is trying to bring you down and you consciously move away from that and move towards what brings you joy and light no matter how dark you are feeling. Mm -hmm. And simply by one moment, one second, one thought at a time, one one thing that makes you feel better, you will then be able to be in the state of mind where you can reach out for help and know that I believe you're not insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And being conscientious of, of our thoughts. Mm. You know, if you're starting to think, you're starting to think weird stuff, you're going, well, oh, well, okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not me. That's not me. That's something else. And let me deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. And reach out to you if they are looking for some help and have some questions. Now you do offer some, um, you offer some classes and stuff like that. You have any programs uh, currently going on between now and through, through next year? I don't do classes at the moment. My classes are my podcast. Oh, perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they're all free. You can go and watch 80 episodes of sessions and the purpose was to make it free and accessible and open. I even include my own regressions so you can see that if I'm brave enough and vulnerable enough to show you my past lives, some of them are horrific, then you will trust that I trust you. Yeah. I might, I might reach out to you for some work. I love this stuff. <laughs> cool, cool. Katish? Thank you for your time, my friend. Namaste. Blessings. Namaste. Thank you. And welcome back anytime. If you got anything new coming up through through the new year into 2024. And on past, present, future, any quantum and any new quantum stuff that's that's happening, definitely let me know. Will do. Sounds up for Cool. I can never predict what I'm gonna do next, I'll tell you that. So <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. I'm always changing stuff for the, for the show. I'm either doing extra media, doing this, changing that, changing this. And then it snowballs because when you change one thing, it's a systemic thing. Things start to sprout off and just, yeah, it's a virus. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Quantum just... entanglement. It all changes. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Katish, thanks again. And until next time, and everybody, thank you for watching Conscious Radio Network's The Seance, and we will see you next week.